Hey, welcome to video 8C. In this video, we are going to be talking about the areas of regular polygons as well as circles. Um, I'm not going to cross out the label for this first column uh, at term and put area formulas because there is actually a new vocabulary word that we need to discuss. Um, so in your first box here, we're going to write the word. I'm just going to spell it and then I'll say it for you. A P O T H E M, and you say that apothem, apothem, and um, the definition for that is in your book, but if you don't have your book in front of you, it's very easily just a segment that you find in a regular polygon, and it is the segment that is drawn from the center of a regular polygon that is going to be perpendicular to a side of it. So as an example of what an apothem might look like on a diagram here, um, and I am just going to put EX period because this is just one example of what an apothem could look like. Let's say we we're doing an apothem of a regular hexagon. It has to be drawn from the center, so there's the center of my regular hexagon, and then we're going to be drawing out from the center directly to the side at a 90 degree angle. In that case, that segment right there is your apothem. Okay, So that's a really important segment for us to discuss. Um, because it is used when we talk about the next two um, area, well, the next area formula, which is the area of a regular polygon. And as we talk about the area of a regular polygon, you're going to see this apothem come into play. Now, capital A is going to stand for area, but that is always going to be calculated by one-half capital P times little a. And just so you know, that a is the apothem that we just talked about. That's that segment right there. Okay, um, Little a is apothem, capital A is area. And I hope you can know that P is going to stand for the perimeter. Now let's take a couple seconds and just talk about why that is the formula for a regular polygon. So if we use some of the space we have down here um, on your page, and we talk about, let's just talk about the area of a regular hexagon for a second. We make a quick sketch there of a regular hexagon and we think about what the total area would be. I hope you can agree that we could divide it into um, six congruent triangles. And so that's going to be, now that we already know the area of a triangle, that's going to be six base times heights divided by two. But if we think about what the height of one of those triangles would be, hopefully you can agree that the height of one of those triangles is the same thing as the apothem that we just talked about. So if we substitute what we know, the base of this triangle for base times height over 2, the base is actually the same as a side, the height is the same as the area, and when we divide that by 2, and we do 6 of them, hopefully you can see that the 6 and the S there, 6 times S, is 6 sides, which is the same thing as the perimeter. So I hope that makes sense why we're talking then that the area formula turns into half, that's the 2 in the denominator, of the perimeter, because that's the 6 times the s times the apothem. Okay? Now let's take an example of just any regular and any regular polygon, so we'll just call it an n-gon. 
And I don't necessarily know how many sides it has, so I'm just going to sketch a bunch and we'll just kind of do a dot, dot, dot that this kind of connects somewhere up here above. Um, but if we take a center and we draw out, of course we know that this length here is the same thing as a side length. And we've got our apothem coming down here. And if we talk about that the area is however many uh, triangles it's divided into is the same as however many sides it has, then area is now n triangles, not six triangles like the hexagon, but n triangles. And um, my triangle dimensions are still the base of that triangle is a side the height of that triangle is still the apothem and um, because we're doing base times height over 2 n of those s times a over 2's again we can pull off the number of sides times the side length and there's my perimeter again so we still have that formula becoming 1 half the perimeter times the apothem. Okay, so that just gives you a little bit of background of how we're going to um, come up with that formula. We're going to obviously use it in some examples in a little bit, but just a little bit of background there. So let's go back up to our last um, term that we need to get down, our last area formula that we need to get down, and that's back to the area of a circle. And this is probably a formula that you've known for a little while. I do want to caution you, though, that this is very similar to our circumference formula, which uses all of the same symbols. This one, though, is pi first times r and then squared. Okay? Pi r squared. Uh, the circumference, as you know, has a pi, an r, and a 2, but it's 2 times pi times r, not r squared. So be careful there. Um, the way that I choose to remember that is by remembering that in the area formula, the 2 is in the air, if you will, if you think of an exponent kind of floating for area. And I kind of play on those sounds. It's in the air for area um, to kind of remember that. If that is something you get confused, maybe that's a little mnemonic that can help you remember which is which. The 2 is in the air for the area formula, pi r squared. All right, let's do some examples. In this first example, we're going to be finding the area of this regular pentagon. We're told that it has a perimeter of 40 centimeters. So of course we need to know that perimeter piece for our formula because we know our area is 1 half the perimeter times the apothem. So if I go ahead and substitute the things that I know already, we've got our 40. And what just remains to be seen is finding our apothem. Now that can be a little tricky. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see on this picture what's going on here. On our regular pentagon picture, what we have, of course, is we know that this PQ segment right here is the apothem, okay? Um, but we can't just plug in a number for it that is related to 40, really. Uh, what we have to do is to think about what that makes uh, the dimensions of the sides and think about the angles that are created inside this whole triangle, but more specifically, this right triangle that's been created by the apothem. So let's do some math there. If we know that the perimeter is 40, then a side is going to be 40 divided by the number of sides, which is 5. So that makes one of the sides equal to 8. So, so here are all our sides of 8. And because we have an isosceles triangle here, uh, then the distance NM here is going to be split in half. So this guy right here, QM, is just 4. And you might be saying, how does that help me? Well, that's going to help me because we're going to try and figure out what this other angle in the corner here is going to be. And then if you know that angle, 
and we know a side that is related to it, then here's our apothem that we're going to be finding. Um, I hope you can see the, the trigonometry coming into play here, but we still need that angle. So how are we going to find that angle? Well, that angle is very simply, if we were to kind of radiate out from the center P to all of the vertex points of the pentagon, I hope you can agree that all of these five angles coming out of the center are going to be congruent, and that includes this big one coming out of triangle P and M. Um, so 360 degrees in our total circle there is going to be split into five equal pieces, and we get that each one of those is 72 degrees. Now what's going to happen to that angle NPM, which is also 72 degrees, is that it's going to be split in half. So if I redraw what I have here, I've got triangle PQM, which we know is a right triangle, which now has a angle up top of 36 degrees, an unknown apothem here, and a known side opposite the uh, 36 degrees, which is 4. So we've got, go back to trig, we've got opposite of 36 and we've got adjacent to 36, which also coincidentally happens to have the same label for adjacent and apothem. Um, that's just a coincidence, but it works out pretty nice. So we're going to set up opposite over adjacent as tangent. Tangent of 36, you guys, is very easily 4 over A. Cross multiplying using some trig there. We're eventually going to have that 4 and divide it by the tangent of 36 is going to give me my apothem. And I'm going to decide to keep, as we did with trig, out to four decimal places. So this is 5.5055 when I use my um, built-in tangent function on my calculator. Once I now know that's my apothem, I'm going to stick that right on into my area formula. And when I do, and I finally calculate out the area, I get 110.1, and that's centimeters squared. The next example that we're going to find is using the area of a circle. In this case, we have a caterer that has a 48-inch diameter table that is 34 inches tall, and this caterer wants to have the tablecloth touch the floor, as most good, table, uh, most good caterers do for kind of formal occasions. Um, and so we can see here that we've got to find the radius of this whole big tablecloth circle. Uh, the radius, I hope you can agree, we're given the diameter of the table, so we need to cut that in half and then we need to add on the 34 inches that it takes to get to the ground. So that's going to be 58 total, 24 plus 34. And so if I want to find the area of this total tablecloth, it's going to be pi r squared, where my radius is 58. And so I get 3,364 when I square 58. I still need to multiply that by pi. My units are going to be inches squared. And that's going to be 10,568.3. Let's go to the nearest tenth if we get inches squared. Now be aware, though, that they wanted these units to be in square yards. So again, we have a conversion that needs to be done. To convert to square yards, what I need to remember is that a yard squared actually has 36 inches for the length of a yard in inches. And so when I square that, I get actually 1,296 if I were to divide that up into small little inches squared. So to convert, I need to take my 10,568.3 answer that I got and multiply that by 1 yard squared 
sorry, that's inches squared, and then multiply that by one yard squared over 1,296 small little square inches. And when I do that conversion, I finally end up with approximately 8.2 yards squared. Why are we doing that? Well, fabric, as you know, is usually sold by the square yard, so that's why we're doing that. Final problem in this uh, video is talking about the area of an inscribed polygon. Just a reminder of what that means. That means that the triangle here is drawn so that each of the corners touch the circle inside the circle. Um, and what we need to do is find just the area of the shaded region that you can see here. So we're able to assume, as it says, that the triangle is equilateral. And what we want to do is round to the nearest tenth, but I will let you know that if you give me an exact answer on your upcoming area quiz, that'll be worth a bonus point or two. So I'm going to show you both ways, okay? So the first uh, thing we need to realize is that the shaded area is very easily going to be equal to taking the whole area of the circle and subtracting out the triangle. Now one part of that is easier to come by than another. Uh, let's start with the area of the circle. What we can see here is that we've already got the radius given to us, so when I take my pi r squared area and substitute in the 4 for the radius, I get that an area of 16 pi is the area of the circle. So let's put that in, 16 pi is the area of the circle. Now what I need to do is I need to figure out the area of the triangle. Triangle is a little trickier, so I'm going to divide this triangle into um, some pieces here so that we can think about what the apothem would be. Apothem is going to be right here. And the side length I need to know um, so that I can figure out the perimeter. The side length, if we see what's been drawn here, since this is an equilateral triangle, we know that this corner angle, and I'm going to zoom in so you can see a little better, this corner angle right here is a 30, 60, 90 triangle that's created. And so if this is 4, this hypotenuse right here is 4, then my apothem is my short leg, so that's going to be 2. And that makes this length right here 2 radical 3. Zooming back out so we can see the whole picture a little bit more, um, that makes this whole side length 4 radical 3 ah, can't get my 3 there which means the perimeter is 3 of those sides which is 12 radical 3 so my triangle if I'm thinking about my formula for a regular polygon and it is regular because we're told it was equilateral being 1 half Perimeter times apothem, one half of 12 radical 3 times an apothem of 2. Notice the 2's in the denominator and the numerator canceling out. I get 12 radical 3 for the area of the triangle as a whole. So I'm going to plug that back up into my shaded circle minus triangle section here. 12 radical 3. And so if I wanted to give me an answer that would create me a bonus, that would be it. If you wanted to find to the nearest tenth, then in your calculator you would enter this exact expression, 16 pi minus 12 times radical 3, and you should get approximately 29.5 meters squared. I'll see you guys tomorrow.